welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to demonstrate various ways to configure Windows 11 so that it operates, well, a bit more like the way some of us would like it to operate. And specifically I'm going to start out by delving into the settings before moving on to some more fundamental registry hacks. Right, here we are in a clean copy of Windows 11 Home with its default settings. And the first thing I'm going to do, both to make things easier to see in this video, and because I always do it anyway, is to scale up both the interface and its fonts. So we'll go down to the Start menu and we'll go to Settings, where we'll default straight into System, as you can see over there, and we'll go to Display, where I'm going to set a scale factor of 150%, like that and immediately things are larger on the screen, but I'd like my fonts even larger, but I'm not going to do that by changing the scale factor to make it any bigger, because that can interfere with the operation of some programs. Rather, I'm going to go across to Accessibility, over there, and we'll go to Text Size, and I'm going to put the text size up to, I think, about 120%. And there we are, I'm now happy with the size of the display. This said, back in Accessibility, I'm also going to change the size of the mouse pointer over here, just a little bit, take it up to size two, that's a little bit easier to see. And having done that, we'll go back here again, and we'll also go into Text Cursor, and I'm going to make this slightly thicker. If we go down here, we can change the thickness. You'll see there's a preview over here. As I slide this across, it gets thicker. About, I think about, about maybe five on that makes things easier to see. So there we are, we've made things easier to work with. Although a final thing I'm going to do, which I always do on a new system, is to go back into settings. I was just there, let's go back again. And I'm going to go to personalization over there. I'm going to go into themes. And then if we scroll down here under themes, I don't know why it's in themes these days, but it is. I'm going to go to desktop icon settings, where I'm going to turn on computer so we can see this PC on the desktop. So we'll go okay with that and uh, close that down. There it is, we now have this PC, which I think should always be at the top, like that. There we are, things are nice and neat. We've gone from this to this. So, let's now make a few quick changes to the taskbar and start menu, which by default appears in the middle here in Windows 11. So we'll go down to the taskbar and right click and select taskbar settings, where the first thing I'm going to do is to turn off the display of widgets and chat on the taskbar, make things less cluttered down here. And also if we scroll down, we get to taskbar behaviors down there. And in this set of settings, we can do things like automatically hiding the taskbar. I sometimes do that, I sometimes don't. But more significantly, we can set the alignment to be left, which I find much better because now the start menu is appearing on the left, which is where I at least think it should be positioned. And there's something else I want to do here, which I'm going to demonstrate by plugging in a USB flash drive to the computer like that. Hopefully it'll appear down there. It has. We can select what happens with removable drives, this new copy of Windows. For me, it's going to be take no action. I don't like autoplay, but I know many people do, but obviously select what you want when that comes up. But now we've got removable storage plugged into our computer. How can we eject it when we've finished using it? Well, we could go up to this PC and do it in there, but I like to have an icon down on the taskbar. And by default here in Windows 11, we don't. The icon is here in the taskbar overflow. But what we can do is to grab the eject icon, there it is, and to drag it down to the taskbar like that. So to eject the media, I can just click on that and eject straight away. And then it disappears like that. But just to prove it worked, if I remove the USB drive and plug it in again like that, this time the eject icon will always be displayed. Right. We'll now turn our attention to privacy and turning off product recommendations and even adverts that you might not want to see. Note that during installation, I opted out of all of the data gathering aspects of Windows 11 that I could, so many things here are already disabled. But if you didn't do this and now want to, I'll point out where the relevant controls are located. So let's go into settings, 
where first of all, we're going to go in system to notifications and we will scroll down right to the bottom where we find two settings for offer suggestions on how I can set up my device. I do not want that and get tips and suggestions when I use Windows. I certainly don't want that either. Next, we'll go across to privacy and security and go to general where we can note at the top that because of the choices I made during installation, already turned off is the ability of Windows to show me personalized ads using my advertising ID. So you might want to turn it on, you probably don't, I suggest you keep it off. And also here, I'm going to turn off show me suggested content in the settings app like that, but I'll leave these two middle ones on. It can make things a bit easier to use Windows if it knows what you've been doing, but I can totally understand you might want to turn these off as well if you don't want Windows keeping any record of what you're doing. Next, we'll go back a level and we'll go down a little bit and we'll get to diagnostics. There it is. And already here I've told Windows via my installation settings not to send optional diagnostic data. Some people might want to do that, I certainly don't. And you can see lots of things here already turned off, which I think is a good idea. Turn them on if you want, but I will keep them turned off. But finally here, still activated, is feedback frequency. How often Windows asks me for feedback? I don't want to be asked for feedback. I'm going to put never in that box so I can just get on with using my computer. Finally here, we'll look at personalization, where if we scroll down to device usage, we can select all the ways we plan to use our device, which will give us personalized tips, advertisements, and recommendations within Microsoft experiences. They even admit here they're gonna send you adverts. Here, as you can see again, because of how I set things up, everything is turned off. My advice here would be to look through these settings and to ask yourself, do you need anything here turned on? If you don't need it turned on, just leave it turned off. Finally, recently we've seen reports of Microsoft trying to display adverts inside Windows Explorer. So we're going to stop that happening by opening it up and going to the menu and going to options and to view. And then somewhere down here, I always lose it, is something about sync provider notifications. There it is. Look, we'll turn off show sync provider notifications, or in other words, allowing Microsoft and third party providers to publish content in the file explorer and we'll click on apply and also apply to folders to apply it to all the folders on this machine. And so hopefully we've now done everything we easily can to prevent Microsoft from gathering data on us and using Windows 11 to deliver unwanted content. Right, let's move on from the standard Windows settings to making changes to the registry. And the first thing we're going to do is to make Windows shut down more quickly. Because as you may know, the Windows shutdown sequence includes a wait period to allow open programs to save their data before they're forced to close. However, if you always close down your applications before you shut down Windows, this wait time can be safely reduced. To make the change, we need to open the registry editor, which can be done in several ways, but here I'm going to hold down the Windows key on the keyboard and press R to run a command, and then we'll type reg edit like that to go into the registry editor and confirm we want to do it. And here we are in the registry editor, where earlier I've gone to view and to font, and I've set a slightly larger font so things are easier to see on the screen. And before we proceed to make any changes, I should note that making changes to the registry should be done with great care because if the registry becomes corrupt, Windows may not boot. So changes here in the registry should always be made at your own risk. This said, to slightly reduce the risk, we can take a copy, a backup of the registry before we start. So if we do this, we can go up to file and export like that. It's set to export to our documents folder. That is fine. We'll give it a file name like this. That seems okay. I've set the export range to be the whole registry and we'll now press save. And there we are, it's complete. So if the registry does get corrupted and Windows will still boot, we can always go back to file and import and bring back our backup. Anyway, with that all done and said, let's make Windows shut down more quickly. And to do that, we need to navigate to H key local machine, double click that and then we'll go to system and we'll go to current control set and we'll click on control. And then over here you see we've got a value we can set for wait to kill service timeout. We'll double click that. 
where you'll see the default value is set to 5,000 milliseconds, or in other words, five seconds. So I'm going to change this to 1,000, 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. That should be absolutely fine. And having done that, we'll close down the registry editor. And to implement a registry change, we need to reboot the system. So we'll do a quick reboot with the magic of filmmaking. And here we are back again. And I'm going to speed forward in time just so Windows has settled so we can do a proper test of the new shutdown speed. And there we are. I think we'll now declare Windows well and truly booted. And to see the difference of before and after making the change, we'll do this, bring up before and after on the screen and compare the difference now in shutdown speed. Now, earlier in the video, we resized our interface by making some display scaling changes and also changes to font size because these were pretty much the only controls available to us. But by making a registry change, we can also take independent control of the size of the icons on the taskbar. So to do that, I'll again hold down the Windows key and press R to run regedit like that. And we'll get up back into the registry. There we are. And we now want to navigate back to uh, the top of the registry so we can go somewhere else. Let's just close down what we were doing previously like that. And this time I want to go to H key current user like that and to software and to Microsoft and to Windows, which must be down the bottom if my alphabet is okay in my head. There we are, there is a Windows. We now want to go to current version and we also go, want to go to Explorer, which is somewhere down here like that. And having clicked into that, we can click into advanced and then finally here, we could right click and do a new and a 32-bit D word value like that. And we're going to call it task bar psi like that and enter. And if we now double click, we can give it a value. And the value here can be 0, 1 or 2, with 0 being small icons on the task bar, 1 being medium size and 2 being large. And if you're wondering, before we've added this Windows default to medium, the equivalent of a value of one here. So if we entered a value of one here, there's no point doing this at all. But if you want smaller taskbar icons, you could leave a value of zero. But I want a larger taskbar icon there, so we'll put in the value of two and OK like that. And again, we'll close down the registry. And again, to implement the change, we need to do a reboot of the system. So we'll just uh, rapidly do that. And here we are coming back again. And by Jingo, we've got a much larger taskbar now, massively larger taskbar icons, which have forced a larger taskbar. I think that's too big even for me, but the great thing is we can use this setting in combination with the settings we had previously. So let's go back into display scaling and we'll now make that say a scale of one, two, five, which will still leave us a nice larger taskbar. But I'm not gonna go back and also change my fonts and accessibility. I think they're slightly larger now. They were 120. Let's go to about, say, 150, I think, and we'll apply that. And I also want to go into accessibility, and my mouse cursor is a bit smaller because the scale's less, if you see what I mean. So we'll make that a little bit bigger, like uh, that. And uh, yes, I think that's an improvement. We've still got a decent sized taskbar. We've got everything else roughly the same size, but we've got bigger icons here on the taskbar and indeed more space to work with when we're running up lots of programs here in Windows. So there we are. That's just another setting you might want to play with. And if you're wondering how would you get rid of it once you've done that, you'd just go back into the registry editor like that and like uh, that. We go back to where we were. It's kept our position and the taskbar size down there. And if you wanted to get rid of this, you could either click that and set the value to one, which gives you the Windows default, or you could right click and go to uh, delete. But uh, I'm gonna leave that there, but I thought it only proper to indicate how you would reverse a registry change. Now, one of the things that really annoys me and many other people here in Windows 11 is that if you go to the File Explorer and you right click a file or a folder like that, you don't get a full context menu. Rather, you get a reduced set of choices and one of the choices is to show more options, which brings up the full context menu, which should have appeared in the first place. Now, fortunately, there is a registry hack which will sort this out, 
but it's a bit more involved than the hacks we've been looking at so far, and not least it involves pasting in a rather long new registry key name. And so what I've done is to create a little file here in Notepad, which has got all the information in it, including that rather long new registry key name we're going to have to put in. And I'll put this information into the video description. And I'll also give you a link to this file in case you want to do this and you want to paste this value across. So let's open up the registry editor in the way we've been doing so far in the video, like that. And here we need to go to HKEY CURRENT USER. And we need to go to SOFTWARE and to classes. And then we need to scroll down a very, very long way to find CLSID, which is somewhere down here. A's and the B's and the C's, CLSID is there. And what we now need to do is to right click CLSID and to do a new and key. And there it is down there. We need to give it that very long name we've seen previously. So we'll just alt tab back across to a notepad and do an edit and a copy then go back into the registry editor. It's taken us out of edit, hasn't it? So we can now just uh, rename that and paste in the name and make sure you get the whole thing, including the uh, brackets on either end. And uh, there we are. And we now need to right click this in turn and do another new key like that. And this key is going to be called in proc server 32. And of course you could paste that in if you wanted to as well. Next, with this new key selected, we need to go across to the right plane and double click on default like that to bring up this edit string window. And we don't have to do anything here other than clicking on OK. But if you don't do that, this hack won't work. But hopefully it will work. And so we'll just close down the registry editor and a notepad as well, which is leaping around the screen. And we will do our standard uh, reboot to implement our registry change. And here we are back again. And if we've got a fair wind behind us, we can now go down to the File Explorer. We can right click and yes, Windows 11 now has a context menu that works the way it should. Like it or loathe it, Windows 11 is the future of Windows. And in that context, I hope that some of the things I've demonstrated in this video will help you adjust to Windows 11 and use Windows 11 most effectively. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.